All right, guys, so old, old revolver's still old reliable, right? So now bad breath, three yards distance. Get it away. Whoa! Was really messed up. I think I threw the first shot left. Let's see. Well, considering my draw and the grip was bad and I had to readjust, five right there, upper thoracic, heart, spine, lungs, uh, right there, and one in the artery perfectly. Whoo, that even make them bleed out faster. So, all right, let's try two shots one handed with the Smith. Hey, dude, man, I, I can't help you out. I'm sorry. I won't do it! Greetings and salutations, friends. Got another special rare snub for you. Hopefully you've already looked at my friend's Colt Detective special. He also let me borrow this rare six-shot snub that everybody forgot about. What we have here is early 60s, early to mid-60s approximately, Smith & Wesson Model 12. Now, what a Model 12 is is basically, I think, a Model 10, but with an aluminum frame. Now, it came in two and four inch versions. We have the snub here, but this thing is great because it gives you full size shooting capabilities. And we're going to take a closer look, guys. This is just the intro. Please, thumbs up. Please hit that thumbs up. Hit that notification bell. Subscribe and all that, guys. Look at my top five carry revolvers, which was the bigger stuff. And now we're kind of going into the lighter weight backup or work carry type revolver we will take a closer look in the trigger and everything in a minute but it's good to have old retired cop friends that have been there done that been an officer involved shootings and can really tell you about that stuff hopefully i'll interview one of my friends uh upcoming here if his health is okay and we're going to compare this to the detective special at the range i might mix in some range footage here it depends how long it is or do completely separate videos on each and versus each other all right, guys, so let's take a closer look at the Smith & Wesson Model 12. Again, six shots, only 17 ounces because of that alloy frame, 19 ounces with a 4-inch barrel. If you're looking for a 4-inch 38 to carry, you might want to check gun broker and all that. So anyway, guys, this side is a little bit cleaner than the other one, just has some barrel scuffs. Now, I think this sat in a drawer for a long time. Again, this is a early to mid-60s, most likely, model. Push button, six shot, counterclockwise, typical Smith and Wesson. But the fact that you can carry six shots so lightweight instead of five in something that's bigger with much better sights, guys, because it's wider, because it's a bigger blade, you got a better sight picture even with these gutter sights versus a J-frame. So for primary carry, even pocket carry, I'm a bigger guy. I've put it in my pocket, I've drawn with it, and as long as you're drawn with your thumb on the back of the hammer, this is no problem. This is a very lightweight, easy to carry six shot. In fact, Smith & Wesson should be making this nowadays, perhaps coming with uh, a Tyler T grip or BK grip on it, which I would need a bit um, in the firing one time so far. Hopefully we get more footage. It does kind of move a bit. I have big hands, there's a lot of space there, and that's a bit of a problem. Even the FBI, when they were carrying similar sized, I think it was uh, Model 10, Model 64s, I think, with 2 inch and then later 2 and a half inch uh, barrels. They put the Tyler T grip on. Nowadays, I might try to get a BK grip. But uh, other than that, this is a great, great revolver. Kind of short on the uh, ejector. But again, six shots versus five is a big difference. When you're talking 16 shots versus 18 shots, is that often going to be a big difference? No. But six versus five might be a lot more often. And guys, really, J-frames are hard to shoot, especially if you have bigger hands like me. So something bigger here, I forget what famous writer put in in his book about how great this uh, Model 12 is. And guys, again, also people carried um, like... Like major cops and whatnot carried either a detective special or this Model 12 as the backup because it's easier to shoot fast and accurately, but also because it uses the same speed loaders as other K frames. A lot of departments, I've been talking to a lot of old timer cops now, um, like Robert Mika, who's going to send a pocket holster uh, for this and the detective special. 
And Robert Mika's brother worked with Uncle Scotty, famous LAPD SWAT, famous trainer. You know, those kind of guys may have been carrying this as the backup instead. Uh, if they couldn't afford it, if they were a beat cop, they probably were getting the J-frame, but they could carry this or the Colt Detective to use the same speed loaders. Let's look at that trigger pull. It's not going to totally dry fire it. It can, guys. It's not going to break. The, the hammer moves up and down, but having the firing pin on the hammer, but you see it's, oh, there's one. So you saw it on camera. You see how smooth it is. It's very, very smooth, very, very light. You would never get this on even the $2,000 revolvers nowadays. Unless you go up to like, I don't know, eight, 10 grand, whatever a Korth is, you're not going to feel this kind of trigger pull as you do on this. So... There's a look-see at the Model 12. I might put just a tiny bit of uh, shooting footage and look at my four views separately of them and versus each other of the Model 12 versus Colt Detective Special. Guys, please thumbs up, share, subscribe. Look at my top five CCW carry revolvers video. It's already blowing up. People really like it. Look at my, is a three inch 357 Magnum, a viable CCW option. Stuff on the Ruger GP100. Unboxings and, and four views of the Taurus 692 multi-caliber. So I think you guys will see, I'm giving a lot of revolver love. I hope you give me some love back. Put it there. And you know, if you're a cop or a robber type, you want to feel some nostalgia, I think you should go ahead and try to pick up an old Smith & Wesson or Colt. Because quite frankly, if you keep your eyes open, you might be able to find them for not too expensive. And you're getting a lot more and a better trigger than you would a modern revolver. And if you do want to carry a new six-shot lightweight revolver, look at the Taurus 856 Ultralight would be my opinion. Uh, I might do a separate video on reasons why I think something like this or the Colt Detective or an 856 Ultra is the ultimate backup carry and you carry it at work in your offside front pocket. You could also in cold winter time carry it in the coat pocket, but it's always there in a work environment and then maybe you strap on your 9mm or 1911 or whatever you're going to do as primary carry for your primary hand, but you still got muscle memory in the same spot. And then for CQB entangled gunfights or for a driver, a rideshare driver, if you have to use left hand to go to the back seat, it's gonna be an entangled gunfight. Revolvers do have certain advantages. And if you pick the very best uh, hollow points, it'll still get the job done. Old or reliable here, probably sat in a drawer for 50 years. No problem. So guys, hopefully you enjoy that. Thumbs up, share, subscribe, and I will catch you on the flip side. Look for the full range of views and versus each other as well. Thank you very much, everybody. I'll catch you on the flip side. You're still here? Oh, it's over. Go home. Well, I guess if you're still here, that means you're my diehard fans that have already thumbs up and subscribed. So thank you thank you very much now before you actually go i want to ask you to please subscribe to some of my friends like hr funk howard funk people i learned a lot about revolvers from my friend greg lion quest fitness go subscribe to lion quest fitness he's got a great revolver collection knowledgeable guy ex-cop etc go subscribe to gun sam revolver aficionado to get your best ballistic testing, he came up with a really good methodology that you can compare everything to each other, different calibers, different barrel lengths. So go subscribe to Gun Sam. Uh, also uh, subscribe to the Kentucky Patriot. Trust me, some of these people are good people that can give you a lot of knowledge, even if they don't look a tactical operator with a Glock 19 RMR and the cool intro music. You're gonna want to learn from some of these people. Um, of course, Paul Harrell, I don't know, but I've been following him since before he really just suddenly exponentially blew up. Um, you want to listen to some of the stories of LAPD SWAT veteran Uncle Scotty at International Tactical. Learn some good things there. So I think that about covered it. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed everything. And do you want to watch the starting POV and then at the range face-off video between these two bad boys, head-to-head, -head, empty firearms. But 
I was about to go to bed. I just showered. Go. It's over. Go.